Well, let's say you buy a bond, um, will you actually get the yield to maturity? Uh, sometimes. This is important. Not always. In fact, you'll only get the yield to maturity if two things occur. First of all, if you can reinvest the coupons paid by this bond at the same rate at the yield to maturity, and you hold the bond until maturity. Uh, now, most of the time, this condition actually won't be met. Uh, you probably will reinvest coupons at a different rate, <clears throat> because interest rates fluctuate, and you may need to sell the bond before maturity. So the bottom line is bonds are actually risky. Uh, you won't necessarily guarantee yourself the yield to maturity. Uh, but if you have a zero coupon bond and you do hold it to maturity, then since you don't need to worry about coupon reinvestment, uh, you will actually get the yield to maturity on a zero coupon bond. Now, how do we calculate the realized holding period return assuming that it isn't the yield to maturity? Well, we can use the formula like this. We can say that the holding period return is essentially a function of the bond's initial price, B0, its final price. Let's say you sell it next year, but we can look at a case where uh, you actually uh, may sell it a few periods later, and you have the future value of the coupons reinvested at whatever rate happens to occur. So you can sort of think about the sum of these two terms as your capital gain plus uh, coupon gain. You subtract your initial payment to get the, uh, the capital gain isolated from the initial upfront payment, you divide by the upfront payment to get a return, and that gets you the holding period return with a bit of rearrangement. You can get a formula like this. So let's look at a realized return on a zero coupon bond if you don't hold it to maturity. Let's say you have a three year zero coupon and the yield to maturity is 5%. Uh, well, what's the bond's price? What's the price if the yield to maturity changes to 7%? And what would happen what would your holding period return be if you held it for just one year? Remember, you're not satisfying the assumption that you hold it to maturity, so you shouldn't expect your holding period return uh, to actually be the yield to maturity. Let's see what it actually is. All right, so let's answer these in turn. First of all, let's say we've got that three year zero. What is its current price? Well, if the discount rate is 5%, then the present value is going to be, well, you don't get anything for the first year, you don't get anything for the second year. In the third year, you get a cash flow of 1,000, the repayment of the principal, and you discount that at 1 plus 0.05 to the third. So this present value is $863.83. Now then let's say that next year the interest rate or the required rate of return on this bond changes to 7%. What would then be the price of the bond in that year? Well remember we've moved forward a year ahead, so this is the present value in year one. Now there's only two years left to maturity, and the interest rate has changed. 
So what is our present value? Well, we take our cash flow, still a thousand, but now we're going to discount it at a 7% return, and we're only going to discount it twice because there's only two years now remaining. And that is 873. Let's give it some more precision. 873.44. Now, what is the holding period return formula? Well, remember, the formula is the value of the bond in the year one, or I guess at the end of the holding period, minus the value of the bond at the beginning of the holding period. Now, technically, we could, of course, add the future value of coupons, but this is a zero, so it pays no coupons divided by the value of the bond at the beginning of the period. And that is 1.1%, um, a far cry from the yield to maturity of 5%. Uh, but let's also consider the alternative where the interest rate did not increase. Let's say it stayed at 5%. Well, then what's the present value of this bond? Well, we're still going to take our cash flow of 1,000. We're going to discount it at 1 plus 5%, still by two periods, because again, one year has passed. And this bond is worth with a bit more precision, 907.03. dollars. So in this case, the holding period return is going to be, again, the value of the bond at the end of the period minus the value of the bond at the beginning of the period divided by the value of the bond at the beginning of the period. And that is actually the yield to maturity, or 5%. So if the interest rate stays constant, then the holding period return is the yield to maturity for zeros, even if you sell out early. Good. Now you can see how sensitive the holding period return is to this assumption of reinvestment. Okay, so this one's going to be a doozy, but follow along and it will get through it. So first, let's figure out the present value of this bond, uh, assuming that the interest rate is at 8%. And that should be straightforward enough. We've done this problem before. So we're going to take the cash flows. Remember, this is an annual coupon bond. It pays a coupon of 8% per year for four years. In year four, it repays you the principal. So what is the present value of each of these cash flows? Well, we're going to discount by one plus our bond appropriate discount rate the yield to maturity, which is 8%. And let's make that a static reference so that we can drag the whole thing out without having to retype anything. So here are our present values. And therefore, the present value of the bond is just going to be the sum of them. And it shouldn't surprise us to see that the present value of this bond is actually the par value. Because remember, this bond pays an 8% coupon, and our discount rate, our yield to maturity, is also 8%. So this is a par bond. Now, what is our future value? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to compound all of the coupon payments forward to maturity. How do we do that? Well, essentially, instead of discounting, we're just going to take these same cash flows and we're going to compound them at 1 plus the yield to maturity. Um, how many times? Well, let's see. If we're in year one, that means that this coupon has three years to go until future value. It needs to be compounded for three years. We can reinvest it at the yield to maturity for three years. 
Uh, so how do we get that? Well, we can say that it's just going to be 4 minus the current time index. That means then by the time we get to year 2, this coupon is going to be compounded for 2 years. Then this coupon is going to be compounded for just 1 year. This one won't be compounded at all, and that is exactly what we want. So let's drag this out. Let's add that up. And so here is our future value in year four. Now what is our holding period return? Well, remember, the formula is the value of the bond at the end of the time period. So we get our $1,000 back. We get the future value of all the coupons. That's this stuff. So that's essentially this number, 1360. And now we can either subtract the present value and divide by present value, or just as a mathematical simplification, we can divide by the present value and subtract one. You can try this on your own to see that you get the same answer no matter what. Now if we do that, we get an answer of 36%, which doesn't seem right. And of course it's obvious why that's not right, because Remember, this is actually compounded over four years. Our holding period return, we're asking what's our return per each year. So in other words, we're saying, what would our return per year be such that if we compound it four times, then we get 36%. So the way we would answer that is we would just take this overall uh, return of 36%, to the one-fourth. And we can get this formula simply by rewriting the holding period return, because uh, that gross return of 36% is essentially 1 plus the holding period to the fourth power. And if we do that, well, we see that the holding period return is 8%. So if the yield doesn't change and we hold the bond to maturity, then our yield to maturity is the holding period return, the annual return per year. Good. But now let's see what happens if the yield actually does change. So let's set this to 4%. As the example asks, well, a lot of things change. Our future value changes. Our present value changed. But remember, actually, we're asked what would happen if the interest rate changed next year. So we've already bought this bond for par, for 1,000. And now we see that our holding period return is actually only 7.6%, which is less than the initial yield to maturity that we were expecting, uh, which was 8%. Remember, the yield to maturity dropped a year later to 4%, uh, but initially it was 8%, so we might have thought that that's what we would get if we held this bond to maturity. But, of course, you by now understand why that isn't the case, because all of these intermediate coupons, until we get to maturity, were reinvested at a far lower interest rate of 4%. So, if you can't reinvest at the yield to maturity, then your holding period return will actually be not the yield to maturity. And that then suggests that yield to maturity is at least a somewhat flawed measure of bond performance. So in summary, uh, the various performance measures for, uh, for coupon bonds uh, that we've learned about, we've talked about the coupon rate, which is the coupon relative to face value, the current yield, which is the coupon relative to price, the yield to maturity, which is effectively the IRR, an effective annual rate, which is of course the same thing as the yield to maturity for bonds that pay annually, otherwise for semi-annual bonds, it looks like this. And for example, for a quarterly bond, if such a thing were common, you would replace the twos with fours, right? You would divide the yield by four, you would exponentiate uh, by four as well. 
And it's important to remember that the yield to maturity is actually not what you may realize as your total holding period return if either you sell out of the bond early or if interest rates change and your reinvestment of coupons comes at a different rate. So thanks for listening. Next time we'll talk about forward.